Learn how a small hunting shack made me the happiest man alive. What a beggar's cardboard sign really said and the best holiday message ever spoken. Welcome to No Bow Tie, where we conquer emptiness and frustration, discover our uniqueness, and live with unrelenting joy. I'm John No Bow Tie Swoboda, author and musician. Today's show, A Different Look at Gratitude. Be sure to subscribe. We all grow up learning gratitude because we're told to have it. You know, somebody gives you something as a child, and what does, what does an adult say? Be sure to say thank you, even if you're not thankful. I remember one time I was given a surprise party, and I don't like surprise parties. And afterward, I went around thanking everybody and thanking the person who put the surprise party on. And really, down in my heart, I had a pit in my stomach. I wasn't thankful. I wasn't really experiencing gratitude. A couple of examples of how we misunderstand gratitude. One is what I call the Starbucks syndrome, that uh, and it can be any fast food line that you tell the the clerk, you say, hey, here's $10, uh, put it toward the people behind me, put it toward their order. Well, I had a friend do this one time and I said, well, who were they? He said, well, I don't know. I said, well, what did they order? He said, well, I don't know. I said, well, why did you do it? And he said, well, because I thought it would make their day. They would be thankful for it. I said, well, certainly they would, but very temporarily. Didn't you really do it for you? Didn't you really do it so you felt better? No, I did it out of, out of an act of generosity. I said, I disagreed. I said, no, what you were thankful for was that you had it to give. And while he agreed with that, he still put the focus on that he was making it so he could create gratitude in another human being and make them feel thankful, never really knowing if the clerk kept the 10 bucks, stuck it in her pocket or whatever. <laughs> I remember another time, I was in Nashville, and this is when I really learned um, the greatest source of gratitude. We're walking along I'm with a couple of friends, and there's a guy sitting on the ground with a cardboard sign, and he was obviously asking for money. I didn't read the sign, but I walked up, and I thought, hey, give this guy a few bucks. We're out having a great time. So I went up. I don't know if when I gave him a five or a 10 or, or whatever, but we walked off, and my friend said, why do you do that? You don't really even know what he's going to do with that money. He's probably just going to go buy liquor or something like that. I said, well, wouldn't you? He said, no, you don't know if that guy is thankful for what he's getting. And I realized then, I'm thankful that I have something to give. And if it works out for him, great. But what I'm really, really feeling inside is that I have, I'm thankful, I have enough to give. And by the way, I went back to the guy just to settle the dispute between my friend and I. I went back to the guy and I said, hey, what are you going to do with that money? And he showed me his sign. He held up his cardboard sign and it said, I just want to buy a beer. <laughs> and he was truly thankful, but that's beside the point. The gratitude came from me of being able to give. So what we're going to focus on is a combination of being able to give and the value, placing that value on it being received, is when you give only from your perspective, you're treating the other person as a transaction. You know, if you give a tip and you're not really thinking of the service, you're treating that person as a transaction. But if you sit down and think of what you've received, how you feel about it, you may want to give a bigger tip. I, I went to a restaurant recently, and when I checked out, I said, you never gave me the opportunity to tip. And the lady said, oh, it's, there's a 20% gratuity already included. I said, that's not gratuity. And she said, well, that's our policy. And I said, well, if there's a gratuity already included, isn't that actually just tax? <laughs> And really, let me ask you, did it motivate her to do a better job if she didn't have to earn the tip? I doubt it. Think of a time when you felt truly grateful, that you had gratitude well up in you. Perhaps nobody was around or something, but you felt it. See if you can feel that right now, that 
that feeling, that full, warm feeling of gratitude. I get it. I get it. Um, when I go down to a cabin to write my book, there's a, a place out in the Flint Hills, out in the prairie, and I go down, and the family that, that hosts it, it's a, a bed and breakfast, the family that hosts it, I cannot thank them enough for sharing this little cabin with me. And it's eight or 900 square feet. It's a little bitty. Uh, but I'm so thankful for what they're offering. And, I, and every time I'm down there, I can't, you know, I'm thanking them too much for it. And finally, the owner said, you know, John, you do pay for it. So it's, it's a fair deal. I said, no, I want you to know how I feel. I know the transaction is complete. I want you to know how I feel, that warm feeling of gratitude. When have you had it? Take a moment, just soak in it, because we're going to use that as we move forward. The point that I want to make, the, the two points that I want to meld, is that the giving of it ranks higher than the receiving of it. One of the great highlights of my teaching is not getting paid. It's that I can offer a student something of value. And when I, when I know it's a value, it's not because it's a value to me and I think they should love it or I think they should be thankful. It's a value when I see that they can use it, that it solves an issue with their progress. That kind of gratitude between two people is enough to heal. It is enough to to cause great things happen in the world. And those people leave feeling better. They feel important because of that shared gratitude. So you have gratitude to give. Turn that energy around. Go outward with it and spread it as much as you can in the world. And you, in turn, it's actually a selfish act. You, in turn, will feel better. So before I go, I want to share a story with you that was within my family. I called my nephew one time and I didn't know what to give him for Christmas. And of course, you know, the obligatory gift giving thing, whether people are glad to get it or not, you it's a role playing we do that we learn as adults. Uh, but I called him and I said, hey, what can I give you for Christmas? What's something that you need? Because I really want to give you something important. So I'm really trying to fulfill, you know, that blank feeling in me of I need to play that role in Christmas, quite honestly. And I I wanted to make him happy, but it was obligatory. So, and he responds, he says, Uncle John, why would I tell you something that I need? I have everything that I've ever wanted. And he, he told me, he said, take that and give something to somebody that actually needs it. And he pointed out, and he woke it up in me, he pointed out, if you have something you can give to me, and I already have enough, then you have something you can give to somebody who might actually need it, somebody who can value the receiving of it. It may, it may make somebody else feel loved or important, rather than just filling the blank, filling the holiday blank of what we're supposed to be. So I'm going to leave you now. But as I do, be thankful for what you have. You have a lot. Be thankful for what you can give. You can give a lot. You can give your wisdom. You can give a loving ear. You can give compassion. You can give these things that really mean something to another person. So give it, give a lot. And be like one of those people that has the sign that says hugs for free. You never run out. And before I go, I'm going to play you just a, a quick little Christmas ditty on my guitar. Be sure to subscribe. It's been a great year. Be thankful, be healthy, and share it with everybody that you know. I'm going to play you something that was given to me when I was 17 years old by a man named Don Kyle, and I'd like to share it with you. <laughs> ¶¶